Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Guild Chat. I'm your host, Ruby. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome. We're glad you're here. Those of you tuning in again, welcome back. Um, so we're going to talk this week about gameplay in Heart of Thorns. I've got one of the game designers from Heart of Thorns, from one of the Heart of Thorns maps here with me today. I want to start, though, with the clip that kind of spurred this discussion and got us thinking about it. A couple weeks ago, Colin was here on Guild Chat talking about Heart of Thorns gameplay, what our goals were, and what we're wanting to do in the future. So let's start and take a look at that really quick. More. Uh, I think there's some things in, in HOT in general that we didn't quite hit our goals on. Uh, I think one of our, our big goals is uh, you should be able to play in short periods of time and make meaningful progress. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, I think that's a big tenet of Guild Wars 2. You should be able to log in, and in 20 minutes and 40 minutes, you should be able to um, achieve a bunch of goals, feel like you made meaningful progress, and get rewarded for it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there are parts of some of the stuff we did with Heart of Thorns that allows you to do that. There are other areas where I think that's not true, uh, and I think that's a big area that we're going to take a look at is trying to make... Uh, keep the things that we really like about the expansion and the things uh, in particular in the open world that, that were really successful, um, the really awesome moments, uh, while also trying to make it more accessible. Uh, I think there's some things that ended up uh, more grindy than I would say that it uh, is within the kind of what we want to do with That's the game. Yeah. Uh, and so in retrospect, now that we've had time to really look at some metrics and how much time it takes to earn some of the things and to get your masteries, um, we're going to take an opportunity to go back and look at a lot of that stuff as well. Awesome. Thank you, recorded Colin. <laughs> so, uh, Nellie Hughes is one of the game designers who worked on the heart of the, you worked on Oric Basin. I did. I yeah. did. So Nellie came to hang out with me today and talk about what those things are that Colin mentioned because there are there is stuff that you can do if you've got like thirty minutes of gameplay. Adventures, right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, if you want to go there first, no, I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> actually, it, yeah, I I saw somebody was like, so they're just going to be like, do adventures. Bye. But <laughs> no, let's go no, ahead no, and no. talk about that first because adventures is not on my list. If you come across an adventure and it's unlocked and it's available at the time, great, go do it because I think they're awesome. I mean, they're so oh yeah, much they're super fun. fun. They're super fun. Oh, I just but lost my <laughs> you thing. Lost your yep, there we That's go. okay. <laughs> okay, so but there are some changes that we want to make to adventures. We are. We're going to make some changes um, down the road. We're going to make them occur a little bit more often. Um, I, I'm not going to go into details, but I know each one of them are being looked at individually and kind of like massaged to be nicer. Um, I do know some of the requirements are going to change for some of that gameplay. Um, and, you know, it's just we want more accessibility to them because they are one of the core things that like you can go into hot and do really quickly and, you know, just kind of keep on moving. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they are fun. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I have gone into like Verdant Brink before and there's an adventure that, of course, now I've forgotten the name of. But the flamey one? No, I like Tendril Tortures, okay, too. Okay, I like, like the flamey one. That favorite. one's yeah, 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 yeah. But no, the one in, oh gosh, you guys, what's it called? The Pit, where you like jump in the pit and oh, you have to pick up yeah, all the things. yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like that, that one. That one was fun. That yeah, one was and fun. I am not going to lie. I've gone into Verdant Brink more than once, all excited to do that, and been like, ah. Yep. Oh, guess what? I can't do it. Yeah, and you know, that was that was some of the feedback that they're going to address because it really was, yeah. you know. I'm, I'm very, very excited. Me too, because yeah. that's, yeah. So that's we'll get that out of the way now. We're not going to be like, hey, do adventures. <laughs> Bye, see you next week. Wait, I'm out of here, right? I'm nope. <laughs> have a seat. We have more things to talk about. <laughs> um, but the things that when you get into Heart of Thorns gameplay, I mean, you know, we have lives. We don't mm -hmm. always have time to sit down mm -hmm. for a two-hour gameplay session, although it feels really good when you do. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, I'm definitely one of those people myself, so I am yeah. looking forward to the, right? the, the changes coming down the road so I can yeah. play at home. Yeah, <laughs> but we don't want you guys to just sit there until the changes mm -hmm. are made, until yeah, they come up and, like, stuff. have nothing to do. We want you to log in and play. And I mean, Nellie and I, we both play the game. Mm -hmm. And we, Wait, I don't know, we each have our own goals. Designers are supposed to play the game? Wait, do not BRB even play start. the game. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just totally <laughs> kidding. <laughs> don't, I will pull out your other earbud. <laughs> no, but we, we, as players, want to get in there. And we want something for our time. I mean, I want to have a good time. I want to have fun playing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I also want stuff in my inventory at the end. Yeah. And I want some gold. And I want some XP. And I want mastery progression. Yep. And you can. G it's easy to get into the game, and I know I've run into this so many times. It's easy to get into the game, and it's like there are so many things to do, but yeah. they're so all over the map, and sometimes it's, it's hard to see. It's a little overwhelming. Yeah, it's just this impenetrable mm -hmm. wall of I don't know. There's nothing. There's nothing to do. Forget it. I'm 
get this is frustrating. I'm annoyed. Yep. I'm I have finished. ADD, so I'll be going to do one thing and then just instantly be like, shiny. Hey, and then, like, look at that shiny there. thing yeah. over there. <laughs> yeah. So let's kind of talk about general things first. We're going to go into generalities and a lot of how you do gameplay and some specifics about here are specific things you can do. Yeah. So let's start with the generalities. Well, I mean, I mean map, map complete, going, going and, you know, working, getting all the POIs mm -hmm. opened up are definitely one of the big things. Um, Unlock waypoints. Unlock waypoints oh yeah. first so you can get to stuff. Yep. Yep. It's kind of a given, but yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, another one of the things are the vistas. They're they're single player, easy to get to most of the time. Mm -hmm. Only if you're good at jumping, <laughs> which I may not necessarily be. Okay, but I may not be very good at jumping, but I am hard headed. Yes, so you just need to keep trying. Eventually, so, I will so get we've this got thing. the vistas. We've yeah. also got the hero points, which are you know sometimes are group based, but um, well, we're going to address that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, what else yeah, do we talk minutes. about? Well, I want to pause and because we were talking about finding the shinies yes and this is one of the gameplay mindsets that i wanted to talk about because i know the reason i'm aware of this is because i have fallen into this trap so many times i'm like all right i have half an hour i want this particular hero point mm -hmm. so then i'm heading that way or i have a half an hour i just want to go get some loot or xp i want to advance my mastery and I will be going toward the thing that I have decided is what I'm going to do to advance this. Everything between me and my goal is an obstacle in my mind. And so there's like, you know, there's like a little side event or there are chests to open. There's like airship cargo mm -hmm. or there are there are gathering nodes. All of that. I'm like batting it aside and I'm irritated because these are between me and the XP that I'm trying to get. But they do give you map well, participation in a little way, you know? Like, if you yeah. do that stuff, you're still getting participation, so you'll get the passive rewards, you know? The, yeah. The little chests that we all love on the I side love of those. the screen, me too. Well, and that's the thing. It took me so long to realize that I was treating all of this stuff. I was mm -hmm. like, all of these things are getting in my way when I want to go. I'm trying to go get XP, and if I would just breathe, slow mm -hmm. down. Okay, you know, there's, you know... 800,000 pocket raptors, which... <laughs> Sorry. <I d> <laughs> we'll talk about that later. There's <laughs> there's all of this stuff in between me and what I'm perceiving as my goal. And if I would just slow down and play the game yep. and kill things and gather on my way to my goal, I would still get there and then find myself with a lot of extra stuff at the end. Mm -hmm. So I think that mindset, I mean, it's super easy to say, oh, slow down. Yeah, it is. But, you know, just make sure that you kind of are participating in events as you're mm -hmm. running through stuff, you know, just make sure you're kind of doing stuff. And it doesn't, yeah. you would think it would hinder you, you know, but it really doesn't. It's, it's actually really I think helpful. we have a tendency to feel like it does. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of this stuff is in my way, but it's actually just bonus goodies on your way to the goal. So, yep. if, yeah, just kind of think of it like that. And I find it helps. It took me a really long time to get there, though. I ran past a lot of mobs in stealth mode on my thief. <laughs> oh, did you? Trying to just, I don't want to deal with this. I just want to get over there is all I'm asking. I would just sneak by all the pocket raptors. All the other stuff's fun to fight. <laughs> well, pocket raptors <laughs> give XP, too. They do. They so. give lots of XP. <laughs> all right. So, you know, once you're there, you've got your map unlocked. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you come across, like, a hero point or a just a small side event, Yep. Always, always, always call it out in map chat. Oh Nellie yeah. and I talked about this. Um, last week, one of the things I wanted was that god-awful difficult Balthazar hero point. You can't solo that. No, you cannot solo that. Noticed. Oh, yeah. You can't duo that. <laughs> <laughs> so Guildmate and I were running around, and he was just like, okay, nobody's doing it. I guess, you know, we can't do it. I have an idea. What if we tell people we're doing it? It's a crazy thought, mm -hmm. but stay with me. Um just call it out in hero chat. Nelly pointed out, you know, ping the waypoint, ping the clearest waypoint. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Ping the, okay. You know the secret. What's the secret? Is it shift click? Control click. Control click. All yeah. right. That was, that was, was new to me. I was like, that's awesome. I was on an internal client earlier using all of these other commands and now I'm sitting here going, wait a minute. Oh I know. Gosh, I try to do that on live too. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> the nearest waypoint or point of interest mm -hmm. because... Again, being really straightforward about how it is as a player, if I'm running around in Orc Basin and somebody calls out and says, hey, anybody want to do X hero point? And they're just saying, hey, can you come help with this thing? And I have no waypoint. I have no PO. I have no Yeah, you have no purpose. idea, right? Especially I'm if you haven't really been on that map. I'm to take the effort to look for it. Absolutely. Yeah, make everybody's That's life easier by doing that. Yeah. 
um, do that. So we did that with the Balthazar Hero Point the other night. And we're thinking, you know, there's just two of us. We can pull a couple people into our group and run in there and get it. If we can get two or three extra people. Um, while I was waiting, I was, like, killing nearby mobs and gathering. Oh, yeah. So, so you're getting I'm participation. I'm actually trying to make use of my time, getting that participation. But we ended up with a squad of 20 people. Because the thing about this is... And did you guys still wipe? No, <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I don't want to so talk hard. about it. <laughs> no, we totally, we totally killed the guy, but I started seeing he's doing his like wind up to oh, yeah. make the whole the floor, floor fire, mm. and I am like running for a, I'm running for a jet mushroom. I can't get there in time. <laughs> <laughs> and then I look around and I realize there's one ranged dude standing up on the cliff. Everyone else is dead. Oh, yeah. That's awesome, though. And there's Balthazar. He's got, like, a sliver left. Oh, so he, like, plinked it, it away. He's And he's in map chat, like, you guys are great. <laughs> you guys are awesome. And I'm like, I was trying. <laughs> Learn to play noob. <laughs> Seriously. It was not even a little bit embarrassing. I was very happy um, to get the Balthazar skill point. Oh, life. gosh. It was such a relief. <laughs> it was, so, it was but very the difficult. thing is, I feel that way about some of these hero points. They're hard. Oh, they're definitely hard. You feel that way. Mm -hmm. You guys feel that way, which means that if you call it out in map chat and say, hey, I'm doing this thing. Does anybody want to come? Yeah. You're going to find people who also feel that way. So mm -hmm. even if, you know, even if you just, you feel like soloing, that's okay. You can just get together with yeah. these people and then just leave the squad and move on with your life. Yep. It makes an enormous difference. I found so many people were like, Dear God, I've needed that skill point. Yeah. I no, am. I'm like, I have a couple of those that like, yeah. probably after this, I will be going on live and doing <laughs> Yes. <laughs> doing my lunch Matt hour. Chat, let them know that you're <laughs> yep. doing it. Make everybody's lives easier by pinging a thing. And again, these are just kind of the general things um, that will help you walk away feeling like you did You've something, done something and didn't just spend your half an hour running around trying to get to an event. Yep. Um, see what is it? there's like all of this stuff here <laughs> uh check map view if you just want to run around and play and you're not sure if you want to participate in the meta like nelly said even just killing random mobs running around will oh help yeah you. yeah 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 and, you know if you're like running by an event you know just kind of kill some dudes keep running you know or st or stay for that event because you mm -hmm. know our events aren't usually very long so you know um but yeah just kill stuff on your way and, and then i don't want to use the word tag that's a terrible word don't do that <laughs> <laughs> okay, that yeah, okay, that is kind of rude. Yes, <laughs> but you know, if you do just want to run around and play, get some event participation. Check map view. <clears throat> I need I need my water. Check map view for a commander tag or an apple. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. started to call it a mentor tag, and Nelly was like, "Don't do that. Just call it an apple." Just like call the, rest it the apple of the tag. Yeah I, I, yeah, I like apple tag. Um, but they're they're. I will say the the jungle maps like. They're very good about doing the skill challenge, the, you know, the skill point runs, the mastery point runs. Like mm -hmm. they're very organized, and um, usually I've seen like on Reddit, you know, they'll they'll kind of pick a time and go mm -hmm. and go do that. But also, you know, if you're just in the map, I, I constantly some see somebody with a tag, yeah. kind of doing that. So, yeah, watch map chat, look at map view, figure out where the commander tag is, and since you unlocked all the waypoints, like we said, mm -hmm. you should be able you to can get there. Get over there. <laughs> yeah, I think the I think the chest rewards as the meta progresses are one of the best things because I oh still yeah. if you're in there playing for 30 minutes odds are you're going to yep. get one of those and it's bonus loot on top of all the other goodies that you've already gotten and that's that's all I want is to feel like I came away with something yep and didn't just beat my head on a wall I want stuff hour. I just want to open stuff I want to see stuff. what I got yep yeah um if you're not seeing anybody saying, hey, there's a hero point train mm -hmm. in MapChat, just ask. Yeah, I mean, just yell out. And I get that the questions are asked. I mean, you know, people are in MapChat going, events, events, events. <laughs> if you just got there, it's okay. Just, you know, is anybody running anything? Um, let's talk about a few specific things. Each map has a scavenger hunt. Yes. On it. Each Heart of Thorns map has a scavenger hunt. Not every map ever. Yep, yep. The new maps have, like, you know, neat scavenger hunts where you can look for it. Uh... I will talk about Auric Basin because that's the one I know. Yeah. Um, we've got a couple. We actually have two. We've got the, the Fallen Masks that are all around the zone. Um, they are difficult but fulfilling when you finally get them. I spent 20 minutes on one mask the other they day. They are super <laughs> The reward is good. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. Well, you get Herda, which is a Bloodstone Gobbler, mm -hmm. and it's an Exalted Head. So you get to keep an Exalted Head in your... <laughs> oh, don't look at it like that. It's awesome. I'm sorry. It's, it's a separate you know, head. <laughs> but it takes your Bloodstone and gives you stuff. So. That makes me feel better about it. <laughs> oh, wait. 
No, I'm sorry. You get the Aurelium node. You get the Aurelium node. I just node. switched them. You get the Aerelium node for your home instance when you do the Fallen Mass. Yeah. I was sitting here like, well, she, she maybe I just Nope, nope. I just totally confuse them. And for the scavenger hunt inside Tarir, um, which is ba a lore scavenger hunt, which is awesome, um, you can find out about the Exalted and, you know, the history of Tarir and things going on. Oh, yeah, on. we got a screenshot of one of those. So you kind of know what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. So look Keep for those, up. you know, uh, inside of the city. And the reward for that is the Bloodstone Gobbler. Is that the Bloodstone is, is Gobbler. Herda. The thing I like about this is that it's a nice, clear thing to look for. I'm not looking for some random teensy thing hidden yep. under a bush. And you're somewhere. not running around pressing control or... Yeah. <clears throat> and if you... Well, you don't have to press control I know. Anymore. Actually, I, I found that the other day and it was lovely. Yes. <laughs> um, but there's also a little lore story mm -hmm. behind there. So if that's if that's your thing, if it's not your thing, you can ignore it. But if it is your thing, it's pretty cool. I've yeah. got a kick out of reading them. Our designer, Alex, put them in some pretty interesting places too. So <gasps> Thank you, Alex. Yeah, thank you, yeah. Alex. <laughs> I'm not quite done with that one yet. But I'm, I'm enjoying looking for it. So there's... there's there's a scavenger hunt like this on every map mm -hmm. um, where you can just go around and, hey, find these random things, kill mobs, gather in the way, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And you come away with some progression on achievement points and some progression toward a good reward at the end. Yep. Yep. I like it. Um, let's see. We have the scavenger hunt. We have exalted masks. Okay. Speaking of achievements, there are really nice achievement tracks in each map. There are. There are you a ton of the, achievements. The Fallen the Masks hunt. is one, you know, like, I know at least for Auric Basin, it's like 25 achievement points, which is actually really nice. It's, so. <laughs> it's progression toward a big reward chest. I you, love those reward chests. I'm oh, almost done with my good. Zodiac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get, the, you get the armor. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, and yeah, you know, we have other stuff. Uh, there, You know, our achievements basically... Uh, I kind of designed them and, and our team designed them as a way to kind of get you around the map to see the cool stuff too. Mm -hmm. So um, there's uh, the golden chicken. Do we want to talk about the golden you chicken? definitely talk about the golden okay. chicken. Okay. <laughs> I, I like the story behind the The backstory is cute. It. So we, uh, we had an intern um, that was asked to make chickens, I think, for probably dry top. Okay. Um, and so she ended up, she had lived on a farm, so she made 13 different, like, actual <laughs> chickens, um, different types of chickens. And so she made a gold one, and it had never been used, and we couldn't think of, like, any better of a spot than to, to make the gold chicken live in Tarir. In the gold map. <laughs> in the gold map, yes. <laughs> I love so it. So he's cool. hidden. He's yeah. pretty hidden in his little, you know, with his golden hay and... Yeah. Have you seen his little, like, his little Yeah, yep. I found him. And I had to, like, <laughs> I have to go back because by the time I finally found him, I was so mad. Yes. <laughs> I was, yes. I was his like, little right, alcove is, is difficult to find, but it's totally worth it. What you do. It is. It's totally worth it. Don't don't be like me. Stay and look around because yep. what I saw was pretty cool. I need to, I may have, I may have cheated and gone and seen her on dev a little mm, bit. All right. But I, I'll do it for real again. It's I okay. Promise. It's okay. No one's judging. I got my AP. I was happy. <laughs> yeah, <good man. laughs> I was like, that is all I want. <laughs> um, but no, you guys, so you guys made the scavenger hunts. You made the AP. Mm -hmm. You made the achievements. And it, it does send you off the beaten path. It sure does. Quite a lot. There's, you know, I, I wanted to make sure that people got to experience my buddy Witzel. <laughs> yeah. Talk about, okay, talk uh, about Witzel. Cause he's so, great. yeah, there's, he's just a whittling Itzel that wanted to get away. In my mind, I made this little story up about how he was all irritated with the other Itzel and Fleet. And so he came down to gold and didn't want to talk to anybody. So he's he's pretty hidden away. He's, uh you know, in the southern part of the map above a race adventure. Um, and, yeah, he's just, like, he's got some funny lines, some goofy stuff going on. You don't have to have the adventure done to get to him. No, absolutely not. You can run through the adventure. And it's his little alcove is hard to find, but it's at the end of the adventure to the right. So I'll give everybody a hint. If they can, get, right. if they can get through the falls, <laughs> go to the right and you'll see the stairs up Duly to him. noted. I have to... I have to do this stuff on live. I mean, when I'm like doing preparation for guild chat yeah. shows and stuff and we're doing testing, I can get to things really easily just because cheaty dev commands. Yep. But man, then I go do them on live and I'm like, there's a lot going on here. Mm -hmm. when you don't just boom, port yep. there. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 That's one yeah. of those constant reminders I have to give myself. All right. So <laughs> we have, and we've got, I mean, we have a couple of other little itzels. If you like just those goofy little fun things that are off the beaten path and you like getting AP for them also. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got, um, oh gosh, the 
the itzel that you can play music with. Oh, there's the strumming uh, the lute. Yeah. yeah. So if you go to the falls, you know, there's a guy, not a guy, there is an itzel hanging <laughs> out with a lute. And uh, when you talk to him, he will give you a lute and you both, he will play, he'll play like, oh my gosh, what is the, what is the term for that? He's playing the, it's not the beat. He's playing the, the, the chord. He's the chord? He, yeah, he okay. plays the chords Yeah, long. you pick chord progression. Yep. So if you're musically inclined, which I am not. Which I'm not either. <laughs> yeah, I just like hit <laughs> buttons at random. How did you, how did you, who designed the music? Part? Our sound guy. Okay. Keegan put it in. <laughs> okay. I was like, wait a minute. You told me you weren't musically inclined. Who did that? No, this? no, no, no. He, he asked and asked where it would be a good spot. And so I figured the best spot for that guy would be yeah. like right nice. in front of the falls just with a good view. Yeah. Uh, can we talk about the strong boxes? Oh, the master those are my boxes. favorites. Yeah, those are those yeah. are actually um, all over the place. So if you get your mastery up and you you know you, you've completed that track, they are all over the map. They're they're, they're some pretty neat spots yeah, too. Yeah, and so there's achievements for that too. Yes, those every are single achievements. one you find. Um, and you get achievement points and mastery points. That's right, they're both. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't become familiar with these yet, they are strong boxes that they fell out of pack ships, yep. right? Yep. Yeah, in the crashes, and they're just strong boxes off of the various packed ships, and they're hidden here and there, and you just run up, open a chest, and you get loot. It's awesome. It's like push button, receive loot. I like that, yes. It's, it's my favorite, and mastery points and achievement points. Oh, yeah, well, that's the other thing you can do. We, did we talk about running around and grabbing mastery points? Uh, we did a little bit, okay. but you can talk about it. Well, we were just like, hey, here's a thing you can do. That was, yeah. I mean, you know, Auric Basin, we've got them in uh, some interesting spots. I think the other maps obviously do too. Um, that, you know, I, I, I'm I, so happy to get them, but I'm sad when I realize I actually have to build towards them. <laughs> but they feel <laughs> so good to get. So. It is. It's it's <laughs> gratifying. And that's, but that's kind of what we're after here. Absolutely. Is, yes. You know, participation. You're working towards, you know, the yeah. coolness. And I mean, I do, I like the strong boxes. I like just run up to a thing push mm -hmm. a button and I get loot but I also like that's for when I'm feeling lazy yeah that's when I'm just like I just want stuff I just want to log in and get stuff I'm like there's like some script going on there <laughs> in me I guess <laughs> but I also Shiny. like the challenge of finding something that was hard to get to or it was hard to find yeah and getting rewarded for that at the end I mean that's that's fun gameplay mm -hmm. on the nights when I don't just want to go open a strong box um I want to talk about one other thing and what that's that? the achievement tracks on the stories because oh. the thing that well and I'll tell you what let me backtrack a second because the thing that I love about a lot of the achievements just the map achievements mm -hmm. are that they let me go back and play the content again which is nice and all but here's an achievement if you do it a slightly different way and the fight in Tarir, the battle for Tarir, is mm -hmm. one of my favorites. Oh yeah, we've got we've got a bunch of stuff going on there. Mm -hmm. Like if you, you know, if you do something specific on each side of the e each one of the quadrants, you know, we definitely have achievements for each of that. Yeah, and North and South the East choices West. that you make during that fight. Yeah, and I'm so it's the same battle, it's the same mm -hmm. fight, but it You're is completely different if you are on south or north or east and. I will confess. The exalted bomb. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I will confess that I have a difficult time with that. I don't know why. I'm it's terrible so hard with it too. <laughs> I don't know why this is so difficult. I like turning into the mushroom myself. <laughs> the first time I did that was amazing. Was I was super like, super fun. Oh, yeah. I'm a tiny mushroom. The Get out of are my, my favorite, way. so I'm a little biased, but <laughs> is it really? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I like. I think it's Dakura's is my baby. <laughs> She's my favorite. <laughs> they are. They are kind of awesome. Yeah, yeah. I think it's south. Is it south where you fly up and you drop? East. It's up by the vine is it too. East? Yes. East, east is, is where east I is tend to gravitate. Yep. That that is the fun one. That's yeah. That is the fun one. I have a good time with that one. All right. So, but I do like, and this will take me into the story thing. I like that the achievements encourage you to go back and do the content, but not the exact same thing. I'm not like just on autopilot. I have to do something different and experience it in a new way. Yep. Well, I mean, so. story instances, you like. The first time you have to go through and then when you mm -hmm. go back is when you get all those great like opportunities yeah. to play funny. Yeah. <laughs> and it's and get rewarded for it. <laughs> it's the reason that the achievements that following achievements are one of the best things to help you find something to do in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, I remember going through and we have a few things here and there that depend on your race. I remember going through one of the story steps as a human. And there was this Silvari who was having a hard time, and he ended up as a Mordrum, and you had to kill him. But then I went through that's as a Silvari, a, and I was able choice. to talk him down. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Wow. Um, I'm not so an altaholic, so I, I am not guilty. Uh, yeah. I'm 
Sh- shut up. Don't judge me. I'm not judging. <laughs> I'm not judging. <laughs> I would love to have that breath of creativity. It is. <laughs> it's super fun. But now I'm like, I have two mains and then like eight alts. Oh, and goodness. And then I just, yeah, to trying to keep even, all the... I'm the low end of the scale. <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah, the achi- so the achievement points, uh, we got distracted because we like playing the game. It's crazy. <laughs> um, the achievement points and the achievement system is a really good way to just look and say, all right, I have a half an hour. What do I want to focus mm-hmm. on? Okay, I could do the story step again, and now I can choose path B instead of path yep. A on the story step. I'm going to fight this boss slightly different. I'm going to do yeah. a different mechanic. I'm going to avoid something specific. Stuff mm-hmm. like that's cool. Yeah. And I get loot and I get XP and I get some gold and I get a bonus reward for finishing the story step bonus mm-hmm. pieces. Yeah. All right. So hopefully that is helpful. Oh, you know what? We have one more thing. Yeah. Event timers. I was like, there's this giant monitor in front of me. <laughs> one thing that will be really helpful, and I will admit, Nellie and I did not know about nope. this until you like yesterday. You showed me this yesterday, um, and I like <coughs> was like, super excited. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're going to log in and you're thinking, all right, what what's going to be most efficient to me? There's an event timer, and I've always looked at the world boss timers on the wiki. Yep. On the Guild Wars 2 wiki, there's this event timer that tells you exactly what's going on now. That thing is awesome. Yeah. So if you go, you can actually do that from in game and do slash wiki world or event timers. I'm conditioned to say world boss. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> slash wiki <laughs> event timers will take you to this thing and it tells you exactly what's going on in these maps. And that's going to save you a couple of minutes trying to map hop and figure out where everything is. You can min max your playtime by that wiki page alone. I do have a little min maxer in me. <laughs> okay, a lot, <laughs> but still. Sometimes I like to just run out of murder things. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I have a little surprise for you guys. Nellie was only Nellie was the first half of the show. She mm-hmm. was only half the show, and I have a little surprise. So stick around. We're gonna let Nellie get back to work, and I'll be right back with you guys. Bye. <laughs> Drew and Jerry came back to hang out and do another Bells and Missiles, and they have made my entire week. What we have is a little preview. We have a little teaser for you guys of an upcoming raid boss and how we made the sounds for it. Mm -hmm. So I am going to – I just need to really get out of your way and let you guys talk about various things that you did. Do you want to start with the door story? The door story. Well, yeah, so this this creature kind of is a little different approach and – you know, it's kind of somber and it's a little different. So I was in Pittsburgh uh, uh, in visiting some in-laws, uh, Denny and Bobby Albert. And Hi, Mom. And, uh, yeah. So they have this door at the end of the hallway. And when you open it and close it, it's the one with all the towels. So, you know, you get up in the morning and you're <laughs> like, oh, I'll get a fresh towel. <laughs> like, uh, whoops. And Sorry, I didn't have my recorder that time, but I came back the following year, Thanksgiving thing, you know, and uh, <laughs> I go and start recording it. This is late at night. Like, okay, everyone's being quiet and it's 10 o'clock and it's perfect time to do this, right? And and they're used to it because they don't even hear it anymore. Yeah. And so <laughs> I start playing this thing and playing it like five minutes later. They come out like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Are you doing? How many you towels you need, you know? dude? Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Okay. I, I, and then they, as I kind of played it and got more variations, like the short and the long and and the little more <laughs> the little chattery things. They kind of went, okay, I get it now. Where they just heard it was a door, and I yeah. just heard it as a creature. Of course. Uh-huh. You didn't know yeah. what like at the time, right? Yeah, it's our yeah. gift, our sickness. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's maybe both. So but that was a lot of fun. You didn't know what? You just wanted it for something. I didn't know. Yeah, it's just kind of a it's going to be a cool creature someday. And um and it really mixed into this one well. And I couldn't bring the door with me. That is why it's not here. And Please this is why I'm talking about, but the closet. next few things we can show you yeah um, <laughs> some of these i'm less happy about than others but that's okay let's get the milk carton out of the way okay and these are all these are all sounds that you guys have used for this upcoming raid boss correct all yeah. right so i Do brought it. a monster nostril music kit uh, m- a nostril mucus kit mucus so music yeah. yes uh, anyways you guys so this is a carton <laughs> and 
it can easily become a sound effect. So what you do is you take your sides and you push it in. It's like a DIY segment. It's a total yeah. do-it-yourself fully. And you flip up the bottom. Okay, so increase the sides, flip up the bottom, and then we take some water and you pour it in. All right, now. I'm really sorry, you guys. And then we have a bigger one. This is the monster nostril. Monster? I can't. I, I don't can't know. portmanteau that. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Okay. So crease the sides, flip the bottom. Same thing. You can use water. You can use yogurt. You can use Jello. Oh I think yeah. I used yogurt for this said creature. <sighs> strawberry. Yes. Is that part important? It is. The strawberry yeah, part. Definitely. You can't use like signature peach yogurt? sound. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's on there. So as they, you know, breathe in, you can get a little, and then, you know, get a little more of aggression with th when they're doing an attack. You can kind of yeah. be a little more. So this yeah. is this is a, a head cold. There you go. A head cold boss. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you have a small nostril and a big nostril. So of course, yeah. So I went to the Gorsaval place, and I'm like speculating that this is maybe a creature made entirely out of nostrils, because before we had the hands and arms. There's a lot of tongues in that one, too. Oh, yeah. that's right. <laughs> There's like, what, nine? I forgot Tongue counting after nine tongues. Yeah. I wasn't counting. I was trying. I, to, I was screaming yeah. and running. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> exactly. Throwing fireballs over yeah, my well shoulder. It's hard to count tongues when you're, when you're dealing right, with the so rain boss. All right, so do you want to tell the story of sneaking up behind me and... Oh, yeah, me. so... To These guys keep yeah. doing stuff to me, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, you it's, know. it's fun, you can say it. Make sound effects, yeah, and they're and unusual. We get bored, come on. Yeah. And so <laughs> I had this idea, because I went through and uh, tried to figure out what sounds I did use and what sounds we could show. And I thought it'd be fun to come up with Ruby and tell her about it. Well, before I told her about it, I came <laughs> up behind her, and of course, you know, come right behind her. I'm just trying to do my work, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, so you know, two feet in back of her head, and yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm like sitting and here. Uh, I'm just like working at my desk, yeah. and I kind of hear something, and I'm like, oh, that's a weird noise. But like the hallway's behind my desk, so there's always something going on back there. So you didn't immediately turn around. I didn't immediately turn around. And I, I thought was like, that that's was a weird I noise. thought that was unusual that you wouldn't just go. All right, what? Who is behind me? I have kids. Yeah. Disgusting noises aren't really anything yeah. new. I was just like, oh, so those are smaller nostrils, by the way. <laughs> Much smaller <laughs> nostrils. Much smaller. Yeah. yeah. And eventually, it's getting like closer and louder, and it's continuing. And eventually, it's like yeah. right behind me, and I'm like, oh my gosh, what is? <laughs> yeah. oh, what is behind me? me? And then I come up <laughs> on the side of her, and I go, so I got this idea, <laughs> <laughs> which is something you like love yeah. and hate simultaneously to hear from the <laughs> sound guys. <laughs> And I liked it. Mm -hmm. So thank you for... Uh, there it is. Who's drinking all this milk, by the way? I, well, you know... Where did you get... The, did these come the from the kitchen? Yeah. Milk one, uh, I, brought, I brought the big one, and then I got the other half and half from, from the uh, lunchroom. Should I pour it down the sink? No, I didn't. I okay. waited until it was all All, all right, thank all you. Gone. He had, like, two uh, two identical ones yesterday, and now he, he keeps coming up with new milk cartons. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> we have the nostril boss. Yes, so what are uh, I have a didgeridoo <gasps> yeah. uh, to do some of the trills. If you want to put yeah, that mic put on the ground. Yeah, let's put that down there. low. I think that we're saving the best part for last. Oh. <laughs> All right. Here we go. That'll be close. So More um, enemy sounds. Yeah. So a didgeridoo can do the bass and that kind of very ethereal, weird sound. Uh, but it can do lots of other things, and, and we've kind of talked about this before, which is you, you get a, a, a drum, say, and you get a world sound out of it because it's, it's a rounder shape than, <coughs> than the sound of itself. Like, I just did a trill, like, <laughs> interesting, not that interesting. But if you do it through a didgeridoo, <laughs> let me uh, <laughs> move, move the <laughs> mic. <in. laughs> it's like a snort. 
almost. Yeah. Going yeah, on. so he's, you know, lunging and attacking you, and it's got a little... It like, sounds like it's coming from a, his lungs or whatever. A little more know, detail, yeah. yeah, and so blending with this other, because, you know, a door really doesn't have, can't really do that, can't really breathe. So, so if you put the two together, now you have a breathing door. I mean, you have a breathing creature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Door boss confirmed. That's yeah, right. Exactly. All right. Um, I'm just, I'm just like guessing all the bosses. We have like a nostril boss. Now there's like a door boss. There's a snake on the side of this, so I'm going to speculate yes. with that too. Um, I, just, I got nothing. Got nothing. No. I got nothing. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you can do uh, other uh, breathing. <laughs> you know, and kind of get some wetness in there too, and that makes it kind of interesting. This is but the uh, grossest stuff, and yeah. it's so much fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we have Didge. door. We have milk cartons full of possibly strawberry yogurt, but just water in this case, because I wouldn't let you bring yogurt in here on the white carpet. Yeah, it might have been messy, nope. for sure. Sorry. <laughs> and we have the didgeridoo. So you're layering all of these together and coming up with just... Does it work together, or are they like... One after the other. Kind of build, build upon them, you know, with, you with a lot of sound effects, you're kind of, uh, you don't just pile everything and hit go at the same time. You do kind of, you know, stagger things out and you sort of make an expression out of it, you know, emotion. Mm -hmm. and, uh, exactly. And sometimes one, one, so there's, there's definitely the attacks sound a little different than the ouches, than the deaths, than the fidgets. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes uh, we use the door more for you know some of the fidgets and things like that um and then we used other things for attacks and ouches um so you kind of find similar sounding textures uh mm. and that kind of creates more of a palette and makes it a little more interesting and some do other things better than others um yeah and you're always thinking about you know is it a frequency that'll cut through you know if you've got a, a big uh event going on where tons of people are firing off skills yeah. or whatever you want it so it will cut through you don't want it to be too abrasive so it's you know making you cringe but at the mm -hmm. same time it needs to sit in the space and you know it's happening especially if it's a dangerous you know creature of some sort yeah. so. so you can hear what it's doing yeah yeah all right we have one more we have one more piece and i'll let you guys <laughs> <That's right. laughs> we really are saving <laughs> the best for last i'll let you guys tell the story behind it first yeah this one was a <coughs> as a lot of these sound design things are was a total accident and um I was cleaning up after a big mess in the recording studio where probably Drew's yogurt splatters on the walls or whatever. But um, anyway, we have this uh, really cool table that, that Drew made out of a piece of, uh, it's like a live edge uh, uh, piece of wood. And then he put these great, you know, like uh, limb legs on it and everything. And I started moving that and it made the most awesome sound when it <laughs> scraped across the floor. <laughs> okay, this is cool. Uh, Jerry, yeah. I'll be back in 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you, know. you just bailed, we're, we're didn't you? We were helping, so I'm like, uh, I'm going to let him be yeah. and be one with the Turn table. Turn the recorder on. Yeah, yeah. and of course, you away. know, the room didn't get clean, but we got some good sounds. Yeah. So, you know, it's one of those things, so. Yeah, All I right. talked to him after that, and he's... His eyes were big. He's like, oh, man, I got some really good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> and that's another one that's like, we didn't know where it was going to be, you know, used. Yeah, yeah um, for sure. We but just knew it was, was cool. it was gold, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. it, and it's perfect for this. Okay, it's do it. This. All right. We have we have it here. This the is not, said okay, table, yes. First, calm down. This is not the table. This is just a table. <laughs> so. All right. So, yeah, it's, it's basically... Uh, you have to find the proper spot on the floor. But so, you know, a little something like that. Nice. Exactly. Singing is a song of his people, right? <laughs> yes, that first one was perfect. Yeah, <laughs> <Got> the chatter <laughs> and everything. Yeah. Perfect. All right, so now we also have table boss confirmed. <coughs> there you go. Yes, table and door boss. With nostril nostrils. boss. Yep. Did your do boss? Yep. I Furniture would fight a army. Huge did your do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stick legs. All right, so that's our little preview of the upcoming raid boss. Oh, I just. Wasn't sure where that camera was going. <laughs> There's our preview of the raid boss. We are going to give you another little look at the sky. I'm not going to tell what he is yet. Catch us next week. We're going to have 
Hugh and Jessica on to talk about Pro Leagues, and we're going to tell you a little bit more about the next raid boss. So thank you guys very much for coming and making funny noises for us again. Oh, it's absolutely. Always, always a pleasure. I want to say one thing, and Please it, it do. all comes together with good implementation. So Cody and Keenan worked very hard <gasps> yes. uh, yeah. putting these sounds on the creatures and then rigging the skills and then bringing the events all together. And it's, it's just so fun to uh, see it all come and, and play with it. And, uh, yeah, so... It turns super out really super well. happy. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. One of these days we need to get like your whole team in here. That'd be fun. So oh everybody yeah. can sure. see. Everybody can make funny noises and see oh yeah. how yeah. much it takes. That'd be good. We can do that. Yeah. All right. Make sure to like our Twitch channel down here, the little purple button, so you don't miss next week's show. And we will be back next Friday to talk some more about upcoming raid boss and Guild Wars 2 Pro Leagues. See you guys next week. Bye. See ya. See ya. Thank you guys. <laughs>